So, welcome to the lecture series uh, by Kit Robot Society on how to make a basic robot. So, in the session one, we will be going through how to make a basic robot, uh, the, re the components required for it. So, basically, we need some motors, we need chaches, we need switches, we need relays for making a simple robot and control it according to us, a manual robot. First of all, we would like to know how a motor is being controlled using a battery. Okay. So, here is a motor. We can see here that the specifications is 150 rpm and 12 volts. 150 rpm is a uh, means the speed of rotation and uh, 12 volt is a supply that must be given to it for proper operation. So, first of all, there is an uh, important concept that needs to be dealt with is that how does the motor moves? This is a battery, 9 volt battery. Okay. So, if I connect the battery to it, the motor is moving in one direction. And if I change the polarity of the battery, the power supply given to it, then it moves in the reverse direction, in the positive direction. So, this is how a motor polarity and motor's motion is being controlled. Okay. So, basically, I have two motors which will I use in making a simple robot. Then there comes the wheels which are needed to be fixed in this motor for operation of the robot. There must be some mechanism to control the switching of robot. Means if you want to wish, if you wish to move it forward, we have to make it some mechanism. We must have some mechanism to move it backward as well. For that, we need a switch. It is a DPDT switch. Why DPDT? Because it throws the polarity in two ways. Okay. So, we can actually move the motor either in forward direction or in the backward direction. You see, there are six terminals over here. Okay. So, basically, this is a DPDT switch. DPDT switch. It is something like this. What, these are the two things. This way and this way. If I press this way, then what will happen is that it gets shorted. Okay. So, this to this and this to this. If I press this and if I press this way then what will happen that this two will get sorted. Okay. So by using this switch we can control the motion of the board. Okay. So we can move it forward or we can move, move it backward. How so? What we will do is that make a cross connection. So I will do this connection and this connection and these two terminals I will use for output of motor. What will actually happen is that if I give a power supply across these two terminals, for I say plus 9 volt and this is 0 volts, reference to it. So, what will happen is that when I connect a plus 9 volt and 0 volt here and make the switch on this way, then these two will get shorted. When these two will get shorted, then what will happen is that in case 1, the motor's terminal will have this kind of voltages plus 9 down to this and 0 volt down to this. So, the motor moves in particular direction say this direction. Okay. Now, in case 2 what I will do is that the voltages are same but I will switch on in this way in the opposite manner. So, what will happen that this will get shorted. Since this is a cross connection, so what will happen is that the plus 9 volt will go from here to this terminal of motor okay. and this will get a 0 volt. So what will happen is that in case 1 we were having plus 9 and 0 volt and the motor was moving in one direction, in this case what happens is because 0 volt is in there and 9 volt is in here, so it will move in opposite direction. As I told in the previous part of the video that if I connect the motor in opposite polarity, for example, if I connect in it in this way, it moves in one direction and I, if I connect it another way, it moves in other direction. So this is the basic funda and we are implementing this uh, motion control of robot by using this DPDT switch. So I hope you are clear with what a switch is and how the switch is working in this case. We can use many other switches 
but uh, the, the switches will not be is actually application oriented we have spdt switch that is single pull double throw we have spst switch we have double pull double throw that is we are using over here okay now let's come down to the catches that is being required for making a robot we have different variants of catches this is the catches that is readily available in the market we can uh, attach four wheels and this is for caster caster is something like this so what it does it, it is useful when we are using only two wheel drive in case of four wheel drive we do not use it for example in case of two wheel drive what will happen is that we have a chaches we will connect these two clamps in this manner and because it is a two wheel drive because we will connect two wheels down here so we need something to balance our robot and that will be carried out by using this caster wheel which will be like this there can be other variant of this as well for example if we don't want to make uh, we don't want to use the ready made materials then we can go for this d block kind of material or we can go for wooden cardboards as well uh, which we with which uh, we can make the robots okay so now i will assemble a robot so this is the basic chassis i will be using i will be using a two wheel drive so this is the chassis these are clamps these clamps are for this such as we can use other clamps as well there is a other variant available this variant which will be using if we make an arm manual uh, uh, kind of chassis like this cardboard chassis or d, d block chassis then we will use like this and then clamp the motor over there so for this chassis what we will do is that use some screws is here okay so here are some screws i will fit them just fitting them i can use washer but it doesn't there is no any need of washer so we are done with one clamp now to join of the other one so we'll fix the other clamp it is known as l clamp because of its shape you know there is something resemblance with the l shape that is why it is being called as l clamp okay so you can see that there are some shape down there in the clamp which will be used for uh, fixing a motor down there so we are just done with the other one this is the other thing so the screws are fixed now now we will fix the motors over here so i will fix the motor this way it has got a nut we need to remove the nut first for fixing we can use screws as well but the nut is being given over there so no issues so i am fixing the motor i will fix the other motor to the other motor the other motor now we have some wires which we will pick it out from below the chaches for one motor from this side so this is for the right motor and uh, this one from the left side so this is for the other so we are done with the wires now i will fix the wheels this fix now i will just tighten the screw so the screw is done now i will fix the other wheel down here fix one screw to it so we have to tight the screw and out fix it more properly this happens if you have not uh, made the screw more tight it will come out okay now it's not coming it's not coming now so fixed 
now there is an issue we cannot run the bot in this manner because it will just go like this way so we have to do something do implement some mechanism by which it will be fixed in position and will run like this so we will use the caster will now so what i will do is now i will fix the base for the caster using a screw so i just fix the screw So now we need to fix a caster like this. So it is fixed. I need a screw more for the ceiling. So I am fixing like this. And so we need to fix some. So it is strong enough, and uh, here is the design for board. So now we need to connect the motors, but uh, we have to ensure that this is connected in such a way that polarity is not mismatched. For example, if red wire signifies positive, and this one, so we will check which direction it moves. So it is moving in reverse direction. Okay. So now, forward direction. So red is. So we can have a convention that if we connect positive to the red wire and negative to the uh, black wire, it moves clockwise. Okay. Now we will check it for this this guy, this motor. Now positive and negative. Okay. Here the convention is opposite. Means the soldering has been done opposite way. So for it, the positive is the black wire. So we will write it down for the left motor. It's just a convention. It depends on how you solder the motors. For the left motor, black one is positive, and for the right motor, the red one is positive. Okay. Now we are done with the wiring. We have done the chaches part. Now we just need to do the electrical connections. So we want to interface these motors with the DPDT switch and as I have said that the power supply needs to be given to these two terminals of the DPDT and we have to take output from this. So this is basically a remote that I have made for this uh, bot. It has two DPDTs, one for each motor and uh, if you want to see the connections I will just make you show how the connection is, is been done. Make any box, you can use uh, any box uh, that is being uh, at waste in your home and you can use that for making uh, this DPDT switch remote box. Just cut a, cut a mark out of it and fix the DPDT switch. So you see here that there is a cross mark, this being soldered to this and this being soldered to this. The same is replicated over here. This connected to this and this shorted to this. Okay. And we have the motor outputs coming from here, these two white wires, okay. And uh, we have the connection, electrical supply connections in the two above, down to here, these wires. So since we have the common power supply, we will short these two wires, okay. We short these two wires, keeping in mind polarities short these two wires we need to connect the motors so we will connect this to this and this to this we are means not aware of the polarity of the switches when connected to this we need to check out that as well that will be clear once we give the power supply.
out. So let's just check out what happens. This is for reverse, this is for reverse, okay. So all set. If I move this this way, it moves forward. I will just make a proper connection. The battery is not enough for actually driving the motors because it will dry up very soon. So I will use an AC supply and then convert down to DC. So this is an eliminator that converts or stabilizes, it converts the voltage from AC to DC. So I will plug it in the AC supply and then I will make use of the DC voltages because otherwise too long and clip it from here I have this out right. I will plug it in there Now we have made a proper connection, we have just insulated all the wires and we have uh, made available a supply to the bot. So we have a remote, we have a chest, we have wheels and we have power supply. Now it's time to run. So basically we will take a forward direction, it makes a wheelie. Now I a backward direction, I move the left wheel, the right wheel, forward direction, backward direction. And now it's time to run it on the floor. So let's run it on the floor. So, moving forward, backward, a right turn, a U turn. So, so we are done with the. Uh, what bot making we have learned how to make a robot a simple robot okay now we'll make you just a brief note of what are the things required for making a robot so first of all you need some motors requirements for making a bot you need motors I have used a two wheel drive you can go for a four wheel drive and use stretches if you use a two wheel drive you have to use a caster wheel so motors to 150 rpm space uh, say you can use uh, uh, different rpms for different applications uh, because i'm using for a racing kind of thing so i am sticking to 150 or 200 rpm motor 12 volt specification then i will be needing a touches okay you can go for this one this one or a manual one this one okay that depends purely on the application that you are using if you you want to customize your robot then you have to go for some other kind of chesses you can go for ready made chesses or manual uh, man made chesses then we need some switches since i am considered with the polarity i am using dpdt you can go for push to on switches or even simple switches just for on and off now the other thing is i need some wires uh, you have to use uh, proper wires for this you have to follow all the conventions for the positive battery terminal you have to use a positive so if i am using two outputs from dpdt i need to have different colors on that so please stick to the conventions we have wires black and red okay and then you need a supply you can go for battery or you can go for eliminators or adapters adapters so hope you like the video if you like the video please uh, share your views and uh, if you need uh, if you are with any query then you can contact me or KRS we are present for you 24 7 and you can directly come down to SAC that is student activity center uh, near the rugby ground thank you